All right, so you unwrap your mesh and you have a nice tight UV map, that's how it's called, in your zero to one quadrant. All right, right here, the darker quadrant, the positive world. If it's not in that world right here, it's not going to be seen by the game engine. All right, now you are going to create <coughs> an export map. Bring it into Photoshop and then texture your map in Photoshop. It doesn't get much deeper than that. And then you bring it back into Maya, readjust it slightly, and you're good to go. It's that easy. So let's check it out. So first of all, make sure you select your mesh so you can see it in the UV texture editor. In the UV texture editor, you are going to go to the polygons menu right here on the left side that's the first menu and you're gonna go to the last selection UV snapshot it's that easy all right now with your UV snapshot right here all right you can just simply select the proper sizing so let's look at those options a little bit more make that a little bit bigger so we can see it first of all the option is the file name all right you got to call it UV map I'll put it on my desktop and I'll say UV map and then the size 512 let's say by 512 all right so I know my size of a UV map right away so obviously I'm going to put 512 here and 512 right here which is was already there for me I'm going to keep the aspect ratio very important I'm going to keep the entire easing on the core value the color value is the the color of the wiring white is fine for me all right I'm gonna change the image format to PNG so I can get a transparency channel okay and I'm gonna make sure my UV range is 0 to 1 all right? that's very very important okay and I'm going to click on OK Cha -ching! and it's creating um, it just created a UV map for me now what I need to do is actually open that UV map in Photoshop so let's go to Photoshop all right, so let's open that file in Photoshop. And so we're looking for UV map. We'll recognize it very quickly. UV right here. All right. And UV map 512 by 512 right here. You just open the file. Chi -ching. Now, as you can see, it looks very transparent, but if you go to the layer, Uh, well, my layers are right here. You will make a new layer. Oh, yeah. You will make a new layer. It's right here. All right. And you will put it under the original layer. And you're going to put, uh, let's say, we'll put some, um, some black into it. That'll be fine for now. Um, so we can see it well. And maybe just a dark gray, just like we have already. That work even better. All right, it's like the blade. All right. So now what you got is that, and you have your um, UV map layer here. Now what you do is you open your texture. That if you add one from the picture, if you're using picture, you can use the picture uh, as a texture. That's why I ask you to uh, get it the proper format right away so you will model on the texture that you will apply after which is called a one-to-one -one technique which is a lot more accurate if you're painting your texture uh, just start painting it right here you know just under that so let me bring that texture that has been painted because we don't have time to uh, go through that and see one of the reason of the first three assignments you know we're 2d and require a lot of painting is that now you're pretty sharp with that type of business you'll be able to do a texture really well in 3d all right so my madness has some type of logic behind it of course um, and you know um, and also it is important to note that uh, because uh, you have worked in a minimal way at first to actually um, recreate uh, the texture on those first three assignments those tiles and so forth and it's so small that you have to work in a minimal way it gives you the tempo of what that uh, uh, basically that business is all about all right so as you can see uh, I'm right on it okay so that's pretty easy so in reality you would just grab your sword all right and I'll, I'll you know I'll grab a piece right here I'll grab those
and I'm gonna control C control V it all right and then you just put them on top of each other as close as possible all right on the, until they fit basically let me delete that one and I'm gonna put everything so you'll grab that you'll put you'll put all your texture can get rid of the background so you'll have your texture and you just bring it in right here and you make sure it fits perfectly uh, that's what's very important uh, it's better that actually your wireframe is a little smaller uh, this is a little tight uh, I'd rather have a little bit of marge actually like that that should be pretty good right here all right so you do all your texture like that and um, I'm going to put um, actually let me uh, go on my UVs and select the UV outside and I'm gonna put a gray more than a black alright um, uh, if anything happen and I'm not perfect uh, the gray will fit better with the, the skin that I have with the blade and so forth alright um, so now that you're done with that you've done your texture get a red of the UV map obviously you don't need the map anymore uh, now what you need to do is export uh, that map uh, back to uh, Maya so you go to save as and I'm going to save it as uh, um, you know uh, uh, um, not a Photoshop that's too heavy uh, in the business you do a good a good a good type of file like T for target but for us we're just going to do a, a simple uh, JPEG so we keep it light uh, for our business and I'll keep it like that. I'll just put JPEG so I know which one I'm going to select. All right. And I'm going to save. Okay. I'm going to keep the no compression and a max for everything on quality. All right. Right here. Now I'm going back to Maya now. So let me get Maya. Right here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to basically apply that texture. So I go to material attribute. And I'm going to go to the color map. All right. I'll put my file of that new JPEG, where's my JPEG? UV map, JPEG somewhere right here, no, right here, no, well I can use that one, I guess that's fine, alright, right here, now let's look at it, you go back in UV texture editor, and let's say it's not perfect. So let me let me uh, move a couple of those points, the UVs, all right. and it's like that here, for example. And those ones might be a little off. So you get your stuff, and it's not bad. You did a good job, but then you know it's not perfect. So you need to adjust it, a final adjustment. So you zoom in right here, okay, and you make sure you always watch your object at the same time. And you right click and you make sure you select UVs and not shade or anything like that or vertex. You select UVs and you look at that and say, okay, those are the proper one. And you go in and you say, let me replace them. So you select them and you move them back in position. Right here. For example, right there, we might have it a little too much. Right here, so up, we can readjust that right there. All right. Um, I'd rather keep it a little bit inside. Right here. Right. Now also, I like to baseline everything uh, features together, so you adjust like that, to make sure that it's corresponding on both sides. So I'll select all those UVs right here, and I'm going to go to the alignment tool right here. Bing, it's aligned perfectly like that. And I'll do the same thing for these to make sure they are the same, that there is no problem of that. That's very important to me. All right, um, so that looks pretty good. So you do that on all the pieces. Let me do that one now. So now you look, you see which piece is that one? It's right here. So you zoom into it. And even with an error, it's hard to see. You can see a little bit of black, but it's, it's not that bad. So now we go here and we are going to replace this thing. So maybe we grab that. So maybe we grab this one and that one and put them back here and grab these and put them back there. Or maybe that one, no, and that one either, no. Right here. 
like that. Right here, maybe. And uh, actually, that one go up right here and just come to a point right there. So I'll rearrange that. So you'll rearrange properly all right, until you got everything in position. All right, and then you look always to see if it works. And that's pretty much it. And then you're done. Uh, you do the same thing with other map. You know, uh, you have learned about new maps, normal mapping and bot map and specular. You're welcome to do that. Uh, but if you do decide to do that, uh, make sure you go get Crazy Bump. It's free for a couple days, Mac or Windows version. And it will transform your mesh in seconds. No, I'm going to, uh, I mean, the mesh map, sorry, in seconds. Uh, let me delete this story. And so then after that, uh, I'm going to change the Lambert for... Um, Ablina. All right, and um, because now you can have um, specular, this is where you put your specular map, all right, and you also have a bump map. And if you put a bump map on it, you just select here, click on the file as usual, make sure you change because you're not going to use a bump actually, you're going to use normal, uh, you're going to change that for a tangent space, all right, and after that, you just go in the file and put uh, your normal map. All right, I don't have any normal map for that one right here, uh, but uh, I'll make a little video actually with um, Crazy Bump and show you how you uh, put those default maps into it. All right, thank you.